Okay, so let's do one final look at our substrate experiment. We're gonna set up two tanks again. And I think for the substrate, it's only fair that we use Ponzo and Aquasol again. Welcome back everyone. It's time for us to get started with a new experiment. If you're completely new to my channel, basically every few months or so, I like to do a new experiment or a new comparison. So we just finished testing six different substrates. Uh, we've also tested CO2 versus no CO2, uh, tap water versus reverse osmosis water, and a few other things as well. This time, however, we're doing an experiment that has been on my list for a very, very long time. I want to figure out if this thing really works. Now, if you've never seen this thing before, this is the Twin Star Sterilizer. And basically, this should be a helpful tool against algae. I'll leave a link to the Twin Star website in the video description, together with a link to a video where they explain really in depth on how this device works. But basically, from what I understand, is the main feature, this effect that you see on the screen right now, this is just pure oxygen. And by increasing the oxygen levels in the aquarium, we increase the growth of beneficial bacteria. And with more beneficial bacteria in the aquarium, we should have less algae. There's a lot more to it than, than just that, but that's, I think, the main feature, and that's basically in a nutshell how this device works. Now, if you do some digging, you'll find quite a lot of information about this device, including some tests like we're about to do today. So I'm definitely not the first one who is doing this, but I just want to see it with my own eyes, you know. And also, a lot of people have been asking me for my opinion about this device. And I can only give my opinion once I've tried it myself, so let's go. So the plan for this experiment is actually very straightforward. We're going to set up two tanks again. I want to create two very simple but beautiful nano aquascapes. And one of them is going to have the Twin Star Sterilizer and the other one not. And then we'll just see if that tank is going to get more algae than that one. If this one is going to have better plant growth than that one. Things like that, you know. So I actually bought two new tanks because the previous ones, well, they're still occupied. But I had to glue some compartments in there. So they are a little bit modified. I'm still going to keep these tanks. Maybe we'll do some more experiments where we need compartments again. This is how they're looking right now. And this compartment number six with pond soil and aquasol actually gave us the fastest plant growth. And over here we have three more. And here compartment number two actually gave us the least amount of algae growth. Number one is picking up as well, the aquarium neo soil. But uh, yeah, these tanks will be taken down very soon. So I've ordered some plants for these two tanks and they're coming in soon. In the meantime, I want to get started on the substrate and the hardscape. And I think for the substrate, it's only fair that we use Ponzo and Aquasol again, because that was the winner of the previous experiment. And I'm very curious to see how it will work in a proper setup with filtration, uh, with CO2, and maybe with some addition of liquid fertilizer as well. I'm sure some of you are wondering, like, what the heck is Ponsoil? So basically what I have here is a bag of water lily soil. Contains all components for healthy and lively flowering water lilies. And if you look inside the bag, it's basically exactly the same stuff as like regular potting soil. And this has some added nutrients as well. So we're going to put a layer of this on the bottom and then cap it with this stuff, Tropica powder soil. Exactly the same stuff what we used in the uh, previous experiment. Just regular aquasol, but this is the powder type. I think this uh, the powder type works better to basically seal the nutrients from the pond soil. That makes sense because we don't want those nutrients leaking too much into the water column so i think the powder soil is good for that okay so we're starting with the pond soil to make sure that uh, this is a fair experiment we need to make sure that both tanks get the same amount of substrate so i'm going to weigh it out not sure how much we need but let's start with 300 grams here we go i've added a little bit more so we have 500 grams of pond soil in total now i've kind of sifted through it to find some weird things so like pieces of bark there's twigs in there as well you want to make sure you get that out because those things can start floating up and destroy the cap and then you're going to get loads of nutrients in the water column which will cause algae which we do not want so i've pressed it down a little bit and now we can cover it with um, powder aquasol i think i'm going for like two kilos something like that Okay, that's the first tank done. So 500 grams of pond soil and two kilos of aqua soil. And if anyone is wondering, these tanks are 36 centimeters from left to right, 26 centimeters high, and 22 centimeters front to back. So they hold roughly 20 liters or five US gallons. Okay, substrate layer is all done. I've also already placed in the filters. I'm gonna keep it very simple this time. I just have two small internal filters and this thing is gonna have the sterilizer. So now we can move on to the hardscape. I'm gonna keep that very simple as well. I have four pieces of wood and I have four rocks, super simple. I just wanna make these tanks look a little bit presentable, you know, with the previous substrate experiment. 
It's kind of looking like a sort of like a chemistry lab here. These things are going to look nice. Just simple nano aquascapes. I have some really good plant variety coming in as well. So yeah, let's start with the hardscape. Well, that was the quickest hardscape ever, but I think it looks pretty good. I mean, we're gonna have a nice carpet in the foreground. I've ordered some Boosa Flandera for on, on, the, on the wood, some moss as well, and different types of stem plants in the back. And then we move the light. I try to make this sort of the same thing here. It doesn't look exactly the same, but it's, uh, it's good enough. So now we just need to secure those two pieces of wood to the rocks, because otherwise they're definitely gonna float. So I'm gonna take a little cotton pad and then just take tiny pieces of it kind of push it all together and then with my tweezers I'm gonna wedge it in between so like there for example and I'll do this like, like I think two times on each piece of wood so one here one there one here one there and then we just drop some super glue and then the cotton pad will soak up all that super glue and then within seconds it's all locked together. Okay, I think the hardscape is all done. I was actually struggling a little bit with my cotton pad method. So what I did is I used super glue, cotton pads, and a little bit of baking soda. That forms a really, really strong bond. So there's another tip for you if you are struggling as well. Now we can move on to my favorite part, the planting process. And the plants for this project are kindly provided by Dandela plants. So for the foreground, I wanna have a nice carpet of Glossostigma. Then in between the the rocks and the wood, I want to have some Crypt Wendy Ti Broadleaf. Next to the Crypt, I want to have a little bit of color with AR Mini. On top of the wood, I want some Taxfilm Species Giant or Giant Moss, as well as some Busa Valandra Serenbu Brown. This doesn't really look like much right now, but this is a beautiful Busa Valandra. And then for the background, I have some Ludwigia Arcuvata, some Rotala Species Y and Up. This is very similar to Rotala Green, but it's a little bit smaller and the stems look a little bit different. And I think I have two more stem lines actually, but I'll show you them later. Got all the plants prepared. I'm just going to spray the substrate down a little bit before we start planting. Sometimes I like to plant in wet soil, sometimes in dry soil. But I think that because we also have this pond soil underneath it, it's better to kind of saturate a little bit first. So we're all ready for planting. And I think I already told you where everything's going to go, right? So let's just do a quick uh, planting time lapse. Okay, so that's all the in vitro plants in. Looking good. Can't wait to see how that's going to develop. I have two more plants going in. First one is the Graciola Viscidula. That's this one. It's a very slow growing short stem plant. And over here I have Mayaca fluvitilis, if I pronounce that correctly. Um, it's a plant that's not used very often, but I quite like it. It's a, it's a small, easy stem plant. And I'm gonna use it to cover up the uh, internal filter. Okay, so let's do one final look at our substrate experiment. Number one, Acorio Neo Soil. The uh, Rotella Valici is now really taking off now. This reddish pinkish stem plant, looking very good. Fluvastratum is looking very good as well. The red colors on the Ludwigia are like super intense. Uh, number three, Wii U Wetland is uh, looking very, very sad. Look at the curled leaves on the Ludwigia as well. It's like some sort of deficiency actually. So that's not very good. Uh, number four is pretty sad as well. Number five is starting to look a little bit better, but I've also added some more plants here, so it doesn't really count anymore. And number six, Ponzo and Aquasol is still popping, looking amazing. So that's it, I'm gonna start taking this down and then we can replace it with our new experiment.
Okay, there's both things up and running. They actually have been already for a few days. I just haven't picked up the camera again. So they're doing good. I think it's been four days now. So we have the twin star tank on the left, the normal tank on the right. Lights are on for eight hours on 70% intensity. Normally I would start with like 60%, but because we're doing an experiment to see if there's any algae differences, I thought a little bit more extra light, you know, uh, can't hurt. <laughs> now, one thing I forgot to mention is that the twin star sterilizer works mostly against green algae. So green spot algae, green dust algae, hair algae, filamentous algae, stuff like that. And it doesn't really work against black brush algae, for example. But yeah, I think that's it guys. The start of a new experiment. I'm super excited. Really curious to see what's going to happen. As always, I'll do regular updates and I'm going to keep track of the progress of both things. I'm taking pictures daily, stuff like that. And that's it. Don't forget to smash the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.